course of your career has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from you? No. Absolutely not. Okay. And end of conversation. That's the hot topic. I wasn't going to plan on covering this topic today. I was actually going to try to focus more on Adam Aaron and the insider selling of AMC over the last two years. But when I saw that Tulsi Gabbard was on Joe Rogan and Rogan was bringing up the stock act to her and Gabbard being a former congresswoman, I wanted to hear her take on it and see what she thought. And here's just a quick clip of what was said between the two of them. Watch. I mean, it would be wonderful if we could get money entirely out of politics. If the only way that a politician could make money while they're in office is just their salary. Yeah. If we said it that way. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you're aware of the Nancy Pelosi stuff. Oh, like, absolutely. Oh, it's wild. It is. And, and, and look, this is, I think this is one of the good things about social media is, of course, the, the mainstream corporate media is hardly covering it right. at all. Because We've got to remember, Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House, nothing happens without her knowing about it or giving her stamp of approval. They can't pretend anymore that they haven't been doing it. And yet, even as Nancy Pelosi is like, okay, okay, fine, we'll draft legislation. But Congress is about to take a break as they head into the general elections. And once again... She's refusing to bring the bill to the floor for a vote, saying, oh, well, you know, we're not going to bring it to the floor if it doesn't have support. Put people on the freaking spot. Make them cast that vote. That is the last thing she wants. So that was Tulsi's take. I want to jump into the details of that bill just a little bit. Because really, should we have people in D.C. making these kind of decisions? trying to impact stock plays or what is the best for the people, their constituents. And I also want to touch on the Fox Business article about AMC. I believe it came out yesterday, of course, written by Charles Gasparino. Uh, we'll talk about that when we come back from the intro. But before we get way too far ahead of ourselves, shoot the speeder. <laughs> All right, so before we jump into the Time article, I just want to say I understand and know that the new Jon Stewart interview with Gary Gensler is up. It's been posted to his YouTube page. Uh, last time I checked, it had like 40-something thousand views. Hopefully, I can pull a couple clips from it, and we can go live tonight and talk about it as long as I get this up in a timely manner. Uh, and thank you guys again for your patience, as always. All right, so let's talk about the stock ban bill that Pelosi has not brought to the floor yet, but under pressure from the public, according to this article, Democratic leaders of the House of Representatives have finally introduced a long-awaited bill to ban members of Congress and their spouses from trading stocks. To say the bill is weak, however, would be an understatement. The bill is dangerous. It would undermine what little ethics we have in our federal government. Jeez, this has come from time. That's not to say the Republican House leaders have done any better. They haven't risen to the challenge of introducing a good bill either. But only one side is in control, and it was the job of Speaker Nancy Pelosi to oversee the introduction of a strong bill. The Pelosi bill would replace the government's strict blind trust requirements with a regime that would permit fake blind trusts like the one former President Donald Trump invested in for himself in 2017. Pelosi backing a bill that would clear the way for fake blind trusts, Trump's greatest supposed scam, should shock the nation into paying attention. So this is, again, uh, House Democrats made a point of criticizing Trump's assault on government ethics, so it's maddening to see their leadership adopting his most notorious ethics dodge just a few years later. Again, guys, these are the biggest hypocrites. Lofgren drafted the bill for Pelosi in relative isolation by all accounts, excluding the Democrats who most vigorously supported a ban and all Republicans. The reason for this partial secrecy became clear when her committee released the text of the bill late Tuesday night. The bill is terrible. 
Why is it so terrible? This bill would weaken conflict of interest and transparency laws in the federal government. Whether that effect is immediate or delayed, it would be inevitable. Although I have passionately advocated for a congressional stock ban, Pelosi's bill would leave the nation worse off than we are now. So just going back to what Tulsi said to Rogan about keeping a spotlight on what's going on in D.C., these people are down there to represent us in our best interests. And it doesn't look like that's going on right now. And that's coming from someone who used to be a congresswoman, a Democrat herself, up until about 48 hours ago. By the way, congratulations. I'm aware that Tulsi is one of the young members of the WEF. I'm still looking into some of that information. All right, but we got to move on. I want to talk about the Fox Business article by our dear friend, Charlie Gasparino. And of course, entitled Data Shows AMC Insiders Got Rich Off Retail Traders. Company insiders sold 88.3 million in stock over the past two years. Now, we all know that Charles Gasparino is a big hater. He did not like it when retail got involved with AMC, GME, BBY, BBBY back in the early stages of the pandemic. He wasn't happy that we put the screws to the short sellers and what happened to AMC ever since. He goes on to talk about all of these things that have happened, about the apes. He talks about how the Fed continued to print money and there was zero interest rates and these were all speculative plays. I'm sorry, Charlie, but when this play first came to my attention, the stock was under $6 a share. So for him to go back and try to say now that we made a big bet on a short squeeze and lost, first of all, the shorts haven't covered yet. And secondly, I don't understand why this is still a speculative play. This is a recovery play. And now Adam Aaron possibly has equipped himself with all that he needs to bring this company back to profitability again. And we get ourselves out of this huge amount of debt in this company that we all invested in. We all bought stocks in this company knowing that the fundamentals were going to have to improve. And really, there are two major reasons that I've decided to stick this out with AMC this whole time is one because of the community and the strength behind the retail investor and two because Adam Aaron has constantly tried to fix the fundamentals of the company doing whatever it takes to stay alive to stay afloat and unlike Cineworld and some of these other companies he hasn't had to declare bankruptcy and only time will be able to tell where AMC could possibly go we don't know what's going to happen with Highcroft in the mine we don't know what's going to happen with Q4 box office numbers with Avatar and Black Adam and Black Panther and then the start of next year's blockbuster year that's coming out. I mean, there's big, big movies coming out next year. And look, I'm not defending Adam Aaron and the people at AMC. He's a CEO. He's got his job to do. These guys made money. But as far as things getting back to pre-pandemic... I still don't think we're there yet, but I think we're well on our way. And we had a really bad quarter this month. The entire market has had a bad three quarters in a row. We are seeing inflation out of control. There are all different things that are affecting the market right now. And again, whose portfolio right now is looking so hot? And, and right now at this price, why would I bother selling anyways? This is trash money. I never bought this company to try just to break even and ride out a two-year storm all right guys we're gonna leave it there for today i want to try to go and watch the john stewart interview pull a couple clips so we can go live tonight hopefully we'll be able to do that like maybe about 9 30 i can see if i can get a hold of tony as always guys thank you for all the likes the views the comments my new subscribers my ogs we are here to break the wheel this is ape nation i'm the massalorian and i'm out